in this video we're going to discuss the differential equation known as the Poisson equation. This equation is important in geophysics for any theory based on a potential field, for example, gravitational fields and magnetic fields. To understand what's going on in this video, you should understand vectors, the vector operator for vector calculus, and also the divergence theorem. So if you don't know what those are or you need a refresher, go back and check out those videos first and then come back here. So we'll start our discussion of the Poisson equation by defining three types of variables that we'll see in the equation. So the first is a flux variable that might represent, for example, a gravitational field or a magnetic flux. The potential that might represent the gravitational potential or the magnetic potential and a source term, which has to do with the source of that field. In a gravitational field, it's going to be something that has mass. In a magnetic field, it would be something that's generating a magnetic field, such as a, a wire with current flowing through it, or some, something of that nature. So we saw in our previous video on the divergence theorem, the what we call the mass balance equation. But in general, we can write a balance equation for a flux variable like this. We can say that the divergence of the flux is equal to negative of the source term, and that's a function of x here. Uh, when we were discussing mass balance, there was an additional term for the rate of change of mass at a point. So this is a differential form of the equation for balance. So this is our balance equation. When we were discussing mass balance, we saw there's an additional term on the right-hand side for the rate of decrease of mass, or whatever the conserved quantity is within the volume. In looking at the Poisson equation, we'll look at the special case where the rate of change of that uh, quantity within the volume or at a point is not changing over time. So we still might have a source term, which is generating uh, mass at every point, mass or whatever the flux variable happens to be. Um, however, it's the amount at a point is not changing over time. So the, the divergence of the flux is balanced exactly by the source term. And you know, in special cases, that might be zero. So we'll talk about that case as well. Now, for any conservative quantity and for any conservative field, such as the gravitational field, where we don't have energy losses, say, due to friction or, or something of that nature, we can actually write this flux variable as being derived from the gradient of a potential field. So I can say F is equal to the gradient Phi, and by convention, we typically put a minus sign here. So things tend to flow from high potential to low potential, whereas the gradient always points from low to high. So by convention, we typically say that the flux is the negative of the gradient of some potential field phi. So this is our flux uh, gradient relationship. And then uh, in some physical theories, this equation here can be interpreted as a sort of a material behavior equation, sometimes called a constitutive equation. In this case, we're just saying that the flux is derived from the negative of the gradient of the potential field. 
So now we can actually put these two equations together. We can substitute our uh, relationship for f into the balance equation, get the following. Substitute in for f here. Gradient 5. That's equal to the negative of the source term, which is a function of x. Now, if you think back to our video on the vector operator, in particular the the last one, referring to the Laplacian, this part right here, nabla dot nabla, uh, if we factor the minus sign out, actually we can cancel out the minus sign from both sides of this equation, so nabla dot nabla is actually just equal to the Laplacian. Right, nabla squared phi is equal to this source term which might in general be a function of x. Often the source term is just a constant. So this one we actually call Poisson's equation. That was the mathematician who was the first to recognize the significance of this equation. Uh, so that is sort of the short form using our vector operator. If you wanted to expand it out in Cartesian coordinates, that would be e squared by dx squared, d squared by dy squared, d squared by dz squared, phi is equal to so these are two ways of writing the same thing. These expressions are equivalent. The only problem is that this one, well, it's not a problem, but this one only applies in Cartesian coordinates, whereas this one, depending on the coordinate system we're working in, we can redefine how to expand the Laplace operator. A special case of the Poisson equation is when the source term is equal to zero. So over here, all right, if s is equal to zero everywhere, then I can write nabla squared phi is equal to zero. We call that the Laplace equation. And that's, in fact, why we call this operator the Laplacian, because it's associated with this equation. Uh, that equation you'll see in our studies of gravitation and of magnetics. You'll also see that equation if you're looking at, into hydrogeology. So that typically the equation for um, potential flow in, of groundwater in the subsurface. Okay, so that concludes this first part, just defining the Poisson equation. The second part of this uh, video will look at the boundary conditions.